Dave and I have now spent two summers in the Florida Keys, and everyone wants to know just how miserable it is. Hi, I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and that's today's topic on the Boat Galley Podcast, where we talk about everything associated with deciding to cruise and then going out and doing it. This episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Infinity, the most trusted name in woven vinyl flooring in the marine industry. Since 2008, Infinity has offered boat owners premier flooring options proven to withstand even the most demanding environments. Each of those products is equipped with UV-stable fade resistance and antimicrobial technology, giving them both durability and style that can't be matched. Think about kicking carpet to the curb? Make the switch to Infinity and see the difference true luxury makes. Use the coupon code PODCAST, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, for 50% off their samples. So let's talk about spending summer in the Florida Keys. The first question is always whether it's unbearably hot. Can you survive without air conditioning? Well, yes, it is hot. But we, and many other boats, do survive without air conditioning. Other friends simply can't stand it and figure out a way to have air conditioning. A lot depends on your own heat tolerance. We use fans and four-way wind scoops to provide ventilation. Having plenty of power generation is key for being able to run the fans. We're on a mooring ball, not in a marina. Being in a marina generally is hotter as airflow is restricted by buildings and trees. Plus, you can't face straight into the wind. We cover our largest windows with reflectance. I give a link for this product in the show notes so you can see what it is. Our first summer in the Keys, we kept a small drink cooler and bought a bag of ice every day so that we had truly cold drinks. This past year, we bought an angle refrigerator freezer that keeps drinks icy cold. We drink a lot of water, cold water. Unlike many boats, we don't use a large sunscreen over the boat. We prefer to have the breeze come in the hatches. We've been known occasionally to choose a lunch spot that has air conditioning to get a bit of relief, or make a trip to Home Depot or Publix. But really, we don't do either one that often. If there's little to no wind, no seams and mosquitoes can be a problem. And if you truly can't stand to be sweaty, you are going to hate it. Almost everyone in marinas uses air conditioning. That's one of the big draws of going to marina. But I do know a few boats that use air conditioning at anchor or on a mooring ball, either with a very large battery bank and even larger solar installation and generally only running the AC at night to sleep, or running a generator. But there, you have to note that some places regulate the hours that generators can run, making it problematical to run them overnight. The second question is always about the hurricane risk. And as Irma proved, yes, there is a hurricane risk. But I will argue that there is a hurricane and storm risk from the Southern Caribbean to Nova Scotia. Insurance companies can say that some places have a higher risk than others across a broad group of boaters, and year after year. They pretty well know that some of their insureds are going to be hit by a storm and have damage. But for an individual boater, the risk is different. It's more an all-or-nothing deal. You're either hit by a storm or you're not. For those of us who simply cannot go far enough to totally get out of hurricane waters, the decision of where to spend hurricane season is different. Anywhere that I could go, there is a significant risk. I choose to stay in the Keys, as there are numerous good hurricane holes surrounded by mangroves that you can tie your boat into. There's good emergency management. They have an evacuation plan and public transportation. We do have a vehicle, but it's always possible it wouldn't work just then, and I want to know that there are options. Summer in the Keys isn't for everyone, but the water turns gorgeously clear, and it's much less crowded. Those who like it, love it. 
Those who don't like it, truly hate it. Obviously, I love it. Thanks for listening. If you like the show, please be sure to subscribe in your podcast app. Just search for The Boat Galley Podcast. And reviews are always appreciated. Until next time, then. Bye.